Marie Jean Pierre walked out after Fox News asked this. You may be wondering, what is that? If you're listening on radio, if you saw on video, you may have gotten to see a little bit of a tease. But this was a bit of a conversation between Peter Ducey and Corrine Jean-Pierre, this was the press conference yesterday. Now, this is pretty long. I have to say, we got a couple bites here. This was a, a ongoing debate, but I think you should see it since we got a little bit more time. So let's see how it started, and then we'll go from there. Let's start with uh, bite two. On this issue of funding, the administration has money to send to Lebanon without Congress coming back. But Congress does have to come back to approve money to send to people in North Carolina. Do I have that right? Here's what I'm going to be very clear about. The president and the vice president has had a a robust whole of government uh, response to this. Hundreds of millions of dollars. I said it at the top, more than $200 million uh, that we have directly uh, put towards survivors here uh, uh, for, the dis- for disaster help. And that's because of this president's commitment uh, to make sure that we are there for communities that are impacted. We take this very seriously again. We take this very seriously. And before, before uh, the hurricane hit, we prepositioned more more than 1,500 uh, federal uh, federal folks on the ground to help. And so, we have made sure that every state has gotten their storm requested uh, emergency declaration. They requested it, and we made sure they received it. We've taken this very seriously. More than $200 million that we have provided to the impacted areas. and But instead, people want to do disinformation, misinformation, which is dangerous, which is dangerous. Because then it, what that when, when folks on the ground hear that, they may not want to ask for the help that they need. That is there for them. They go, they may not ask for what they need. Well, at this point, I feel like the, the government should be there. Uh, I don't even know if they should be doing the asking. That's right. And and when you listen to that and how she tries to lay out all the things they're doing, at the same time, President Biden was sent a letter to Congress saying you need to come back and, right. and provide more funds. When you listen to that, she goes through what they're doing, trying to make it seem like we're working very hard and then ends it with, but uh, flips it on, him. says people want to do disinformation and misinformation, which is dangerous. And the problem with that is that when you're uh, when you are speaking for the president at a time like this, when you see the imagery out of North Carolina and East Tennessee and Georgia and Florida, and then you know another catastrophic storm, one of the strongest recorded storms on in history, is coming straight for Florida, and you hear her saying a simple question about reality is misinformation or disinformation. That infuriates Americans. Yeah, it really does. It keeps going. So the conversation didn't stop there. Which is dangerous, which is dangerous, because then it, what that when when folks on the ground hear that, they may not want to ask for the help that they need. That is there for them. That is there for them. That's our focus here. But President Biden is fond of saying, show me your budget and I will tell you what you value. If he's got money for people in Lebanon right now without Congress having to come back, what does it say about his values? There's not enough money right now for his people values, in North Carolina who his, need it. That's not misinformation. Wait. No, that is. We, your whole your whole premise of the question is misinformation, sir. Excuse what you don't. Me? Yes. Yes. Which it's misinformation. Did, is there I money just, to I just mentioned, right now? I just mentioned. I just mentioned to you that we provided more than $200 million to folks who are impacted in the area. And I just shared with you that people are deciding not to not, uh, people are deciding not to President not to wait to Congress that there's not enough money to help people we're in North talking Carolina about the SBA by, disaster loan that's yes. money for people in North but, Carolina and that's important and people in North Carolina need that Con- so wait this is nothing new right Peter this is nothing new Congress comes together they provide money millions of dollars for disaster relief we're asking them to do the job that they have been doing for some time from a letter that President Biden we're doing for some time. Schumer and Jeffries, the president's letter is not misinformation. Would you agree? No, the way you're asking me the question is misinformation. There is money that we are allocating to the impacted areas, and there's money there to help people who truly need it. There are survivors who need the funding. She could have made her statement without getting into that misinformation, disinformation verbiage. When you start doing that, those are, uh, you know, almost dog whistles at this point right. where 
people on the left go, oh, that's all this is, a Republican talking point. And then, of course, people on the right go, well, if you're using words like misinformation, disinformation, you pretty much invalidated your entire uh, discussion beforehand because we know what that really means. And what that really means is usually censorship uh, you know, and, and not being honest with the American people. You know, it gives us flashbacks to the last election. When she goes through that, it, if she were to explain everything she did in the first one and then even... There, I'm sure there is a technical government answer about, yes, yes, it, those funds for emergency to Lebanon were already allocated by Congress. And we just it was discretionary spending at that point. But FEMA is because of the size of this disaster tapped out and we need more funds allocated because uh, Congress has the power of the purse. She could have done all that without then trying to label a news network that's in there with credentials and passes to ask questions as essentially fake news and saying that they are spreading misinformation and disinformation and calling them dangerous. That's something they used to criticize President Trump about was saying that he was making the, the job of journalists very hard by and it was dangerous for them because of that. That's exactly what Corrine Jean-Pierre is doing here. She is taking it to a level where it's it's making everyone think that, oh, this person is spreading lies and, and misinformation. They normally tack on to Russia that you're just spreading talking points to meddle in the election coming out of Russia. That's all this feels like. And in him being asking a very legitimate question that's on the mind of, I guarantee you, millions of people in uh, Georgia, North Carolina and Tennessee, but millions and millions, tens of millions of people across the country about why this is so hard to take care of the American people before doling out cash to a country that is not filled with many allies of no, the United not exactly States. Friendly. That when there needs to be humanitarian aid, how about you start at home? How about you get that figured out? Because we know that storms are, are, are creating havoc. And if it is a part of your climate change agenda, why wasn't your, uh, your yeah. Green New Deal light that they passed with the Inflation Reduction Act, why wasn't that beefing up the ability to take care of Americans at home because it's not their priority. What gets you the most votes is making yourself look like you really care about people, but not actually doing it when it's your own. I mean, that's just the truth of it. It's sad. It's sad because it sounds nice in a tweet to say you're sending out uh, $150 million to Lebanon. Even when you say that, $150 additional million, and you're like, well, we gave $200 million to North Carolina. I don't know. Maybe there should be a little bit more discrepancy in those numbers. Maybe there should be more going to our own people into North Carolina and to the South where it's needed right now instead of going across the world, like you said, to non-friendly areas. Now, the conversation kept going. This is kind of how it wrapped up. Let's hear bite four. It's sort of the final conversation, the final discussion between KJP and Peter Ducey. You don't like misinformation. I said that I actually said we have the money available to help uh, survivors of Hurricane Helene and also Hurricane Milton. Now, we're now there's going to be a shortfall, right? Because we don't know how bad it's Hurricane Milton is going to be. And so we're going to need additional funding. We're going to need additional funding. That's exactly what I just asked about. And you said it was no. misinformation. Yes. What you're asking me is why Congress needs to come back and do their job. That's what you're asking me. Congress needs to come back and do their job and provide an extra assistance, extra funding to disaster relief fund. That's what Congress needs to do. And we're going to continue to urge that. You may not want that, but that's OK. That's what this president wants. And that's what the vice president wants. I mean, it is kind of a, a ridiculous moment when a real legitimate question happened. Look, this is what you want, by the way. I want someone look even if it was a republican uh president i want someone in that press room to push to get the real answers so i'm happy peter Ducey exists i want someone in there to hold accountable uh our administrations even if we disagree with them fundamentally at least give them the answers that they're looking for